if you look at the two previous speakers, one was talking about the lungs and one was talking about the kidneys. And I'm going to talk about the organ in between, which is the liver and the metabolic syndrome. And uh, yeah, okay. In this talk, I'm actually going to cover three aspects. Firstly, liver fat and the metabolic syndrome, because I think that's what's interesting to most of this audience. Why does the liver develop fat? And finally, because I'm a gastroenterologist by training, uh, why does the liver get damaged in the presence of a fatty liver? So really, this is one of the papers that we published back in 2002, looking at patients with steatohepatitis and insulin resistance. And this uh, rare, you know, seminal paper was really established fatty liver disease as part of the metabolic syndrome and insulin resistance. So we just had 66 patients. We compared it with patients with other liver diseases, and we just used a very crude index of insulin sensitivity, the HOMER index, and we showed that basically 98% of patients, even with this crude index, had insulin resistance, and that 90% of those fulfill the criteria for the metabolic syndrome. And this has then subsequently led to you know, thousands of papers on fatty liver disease, and essentially the bottom line is that insulin resistance is universal in steatohepatitis, if you don't have insulin resistance, you don't have NASH. And obviously, if you want to treat NASH, you need to reverse the insulin resistance. So really, that sets the stage as that the liver is really um, liver fat and steatohepatitis is part of the insulin resistance syndrome. Well, what about the relationship between liver fat and the metabolic syndrome? And there's quite a few papers. This is from Iki Avenen's group in Finland. And what you can see is that if you measure liver fat across the x-axis by MRS, and then you look at various things such as plasma glucose, waist circumference, triglyceride, systolic blood pressure, diastolic blood pressure, as expected with increasing liver fat, there's a positive correlation with all of these markers. And as expected, there's an inverse correlation with serum HDL and liver fat. Is this associated with cardiovascular or other mortality? This is from the Valipoli Cella studies from Italy, and they actually diagnosed fatty liver disease on, on the basis of a liver ultrasound. And what they were able to show is that the presence of liver fat was associated with increased cardiovascular mortality, and the, the, the relative odds ratio was about two. And even if you adjusted for other components of the metabolic syndrome, the odds ratio for liver fat increasing cardiovascular mortality was about 1.5, suggesting that liver fat is really quite important for cardiovascular mortality. And the same sort of data has been produced looking at carotid intima media thickness. And what you can see is compared to between control subjects and patients with fatty liver disease, whether it's simple steatosis or steatohepatitis, that with the presence of liver fat, there's increased carotid IMT. So the question really that all of these studies bring, bring about is what is the relationship of liver fat to insulin sensitivity? And these are some very nice studies that have been published in the uh, last 12 months. So this is a study published in gastroenterology and what they had was 42 subjects in all of these subjects, they measured liver fat by MRS, so it's extremely accurate. And then they did two-stage euglycemic clamps, and they were able to measure hepatic insulin sensitivity, uh, glucose disposal, so muscle insulin sensitivity, and adipose tissue insulin sensitivity. And what they were able to show is that intrahepatic or liver fat was the best predictor of insulin action in the liver in, in adipose tissue and muscle. So with increasing liver fat, there's reduced hepatic insulin sensitivity, reduced uh, adipose insulin sensitivity, reduced skeletal muscle insulin sensitivity. And what they were able to show is that the intrahepatic triglyceride was responsible for between a third and 40% of the variability in insulin sensitivity, suggesting that liver fat not only controls sensitivity within the liver, but also in peripheral tissues. Now the question then is, is it liver fat or is it visceral fat? And are we not measuring the two? And this is really quite a nice study published in PNAS. And they had 10 subjects in each group. 
and they had one group of 20 subjects matched for the exact same amount of visceral adipose tissue, but they differed in the amount of intrahepatic fat. And between the normal and high intrahepatic fat groups, the difference was about fivefold. And in the second group of 20 patients, 10 in each group, they had the same amount of liver fat, but they had differences in visceral fat, and the difference between low and high VAT was about twofold. And the first thing that this study showed is that if they were matched for intrahepatic triglyceride, it didn't matter what your visceral fat was. The hepatic insulin sensitivity, the muscle insulin sensitivity, and the adipose insulin sensitivity was exactly the same. But if you actually matched for VAT and you looked at individuals with different liver fat, what you find is the people with the high liver fat have the lowest hepatic insulin sensitivity, the lowest muscle insulin sensitivity, and the lowest adipose tissue insulin sensitivity, suggesting that it's fat in the liver, not visceral fat, that is important for uh, measures of insulin sensitivity measured by the clamp. And then in terms of the atherogenic dyslipidemia that occurs in patients with, um, with the metabolic syndrome, what they were able to show is that, again, this is matched for the intrahepatic triglyceride, matched for VAT. If you look at people with high liver fat, they had the highest amounts of triglyceride secretion. Okay? Patients with different proportions of visceral fat had identical amounts of triglyceride secretion, but if you had high liver fat, you had increased triglyceride secretion, which has been associated with atherogenic dyslipidemia. And all of these studies are actually human studies, so it's very difficult to do longitudinal studies. But what might be the mechanism of why liver fat is so important in predicting atherogenic dyslipidemia and insulin sensitivity? What they did was they actually measured CD36. And as you know, CD36 is quite important for... Uh, free fatty acid uptake and what they were able to show is that in patients with high hepatic fat the skeletal muscle CD36 was increased suggesting that they might have increased um, muscle fat accumulation causing the insulin uh, resistance in the muscle and they have reduced adipose tissue um, CD36 expression that might account for these changes. So obviously these need sort of interventional studies in animals, but I think they, it points to the critical importance of liver fat in the metabolic syndrome. The other evidence that liver fat is important is data from the lurco mice in terms of atherogenic dyslipidemia. So the lurco mice are liver insulin receptor 1 and insulin receptor 2 knockout mice. And so if you actually feed these mice a standard rat chow, all they've got is liver fat that's reduced, I mean, um, liver insulin receptor knocked out. What you find is that they have low HDL as seen in the metabolic syndrome. They have, and they have um, low HDL cholesterol and they have increased VLDL cholesterol and they have reduced VLDL, uh, reduced triglyceride in VLDL and IDL suggesting that hepatic insulin resistance is partly responsible for the atherogenic dyslipidemia, uh, suggesting that liver fat is quite crucial in the whole uh, field of the metabolic syndrome. So why does fat accumulate in the liver in the metabolic syndrome? There's been some quite nice studies done with uh, palmitate and infusing and looking at lipid kinetics and what we know is when a liver accumulates fat, it accumulates it from three sources. It accumulates from insulin resistance causing adipocyte lipolysis, free fatty acids going into the liver and then being re-esterified as triglyceride. It comes from the diet as chylomicrons and then it also comes from de novo lipogenesis because of hyperinsulinemia and elevated blood glucose activating these transcription factors which is the Shrebs and the Krebs, which cause lipogenesis. And what we know is that liver fat accumulates, about 60% of it or 66% of it comes from the adipocyte, about 25% comes from de novo lipogenesis, and about 15% comes directly from your diet. 